Hi, it's Katrina. My friend David is going to be helping me out with the voiceover today, so I hope you enjoy. Number 10, Gandhi. Not long after Gandhi's father died in 1885, he journeyed to South Africa. It was here where he first dabbled in activism, but it was also in South Africa where he spent a large part of his adulthood. He lived there from at least between 1893 and 1915, or from his middle 20s to his middle 40s. This was way before he became the figurehead for India's independence. But what many people don't realize is that Gandhi was blatantly racist for a huge part of his life. While he was in South Africa, he fought for the rights of Indians living in South Africa because it was a British colony just like India, but not for the South Africans. In one of his speeches, he says that Indians are continuously struggling against the degradation inflicted upon them by the Europeans. He then says that the Europeans wish to degrade the Indians down to the level of the native Africans and basically calls them primitive. In Gandhi's address in Bombay in 1896, he says Africans' only occupation is hunting and their only ambition is to collect enough cattle to buy a wife and then pass the rest of their life being lazy and naked. He even called African people uncivilized and troublesome and compared them to animals, and this was in 1908. So while Gandhi dedicated much of his life to helping the Indian people, he didn't exactly care for other people with dark skin. Number 9. Mother Teresa In 2016, Mother Teresa was declared a saint by Pope Francis. But not everyone is convinced. The problem with Mother Teresa being a saint is that, in order to achieve sainthood, the Vatican has to legitimately recognize two very real miracles that occurred during the person's life. These miracles need to be something that only a godly person could have done, like cure someone of an incurable disease or walk on water. And since we have science, proving miracles isn't exactly that easy. With Mother Teresa's miracles, the first was recognized in 2003 by John Paul II, and the second was recognized by Pope Francis in 2015. Both popes claimed that Mother Teresa cured a woman and a man of their tumors, but these cases have been seriously disputed, especially since the doctor who worked on one case had actually been the one to treat the tumor with drugs. This doctor has been quite vocal about the absence of any miracle, other than the miracle of science. There were also many critics of the medical centers that she started. Sometimes the conditions were so bad, patients would get even sicker. There was a documentary showing expired medications, needles washed under tap water and then reused, volunteers with no training helping people with highly contagious diseases. Mother Teresa believed that patients only needed to feel loved by God and die in peace, not necessarily receive proper medical care. So medical experts were not very happy with this. They called them homes for the dying instead of homes for the sick. She may have spent her life as a humanitarian, but she wasn't exactly the humanitarian we look up to these days. Her main purpose was to convert as many people to Catholicism as she could. This often came at the expense of the poor and the sick. Even the New York Times said in their paper that Mother Teresa was less interested in helping the poor and more interested in using them to fuel the expansion of her fundamentalist Roman Catholic beliefs. She also rubbed elbows with many wealthy elite friends, such as Haitian dictator Jean-Claude Duvalier, who was eventually charged with crimes against humanity, and Charles Keating, who was one of the key figures that brought about a housing and loan crisis in the 80s. There is also the question of the money. Mother Teresa received millions, but she would never buy anything and only had her organizations live off donations. So where did all that money go? Nobody knows. Number 8. Abe Lincoln there are some people who say Abraham Lincoln was about as racist as a man could get. He believed slavery was morally wrong, but that had nothing to do with his view of the slaves themselves. In 1858, when Abraham Lincoln defeated Stephen Douglas, Lincoln made his opinion very clear. He said that he was not in favor of bringing about any social and political equality between white and black people. He even said that he opposed black people having the right to vote or to intermarry with whites. 
That being said, Abraham Lincoln believed all men had the right to improve their position in society, and because of that, slavery, Lincoln felt, was totally unjust. Here's another thing many people don't know about Lincoln. He was a tremendous supporter of colonization and may have believed that if the entire continent of Africa were colonized by United States citizens, the problem of slavery would just vanish. In 1854, he openly advocated for colonization and said his first decree would be to free all slaves in America and ship them to Liberia. Liberia actually began as an African state founded by the American Colonization Society in 1821. Lincoln even hosted a delegation in 1862 of recently freed men and women to discuss a plan for the colonization of Central America. He argued it would be better to turn Central America into one big U.S. colony where many freed slaves could be sent. In his own words, it would be better for everyone. Number 7. Nikola Tesla Nikola Tesla was one of the greatest inventors in human history, and yet he was also one of the most disturbed. Tesla had all kinds of strange ideas about how the world should operate, and even had plans on how to put those ideas into motion. For example, Tesla said in the 1930s that criminals should be forcibly sterilized, and so should the mentally ill. He even said that places like Nazi Germany and the US weren't going far enough with their treatment of criminals and the less desirable members of society. It was his humble opinion that by the year 2100, eugenics would be a universally established system to weed out undesirable humans from the greater population. Nikola Tesla believed in some of the same things Hitler did. He wanted to use sterilization and extermination to purify the human race. He said that in the past, those who survived were always the fittest. But because of man's newly discovered sense of pity, the unfit continue to be bred when they should be restricted from having children. He also suggested making marriage impossible for criminals. Number 6. Einstein In the 1980s, Evan Walker Harris published an article in Physics Today. The American physicist suggested in his article that Einstein was not the genius we believe him to be. He said that Einstein's first wife, Maleva Marek, was the silent co-author of his paper on special relativity in 1905. He insists Einstein couldn't figure it out on his own and needed help from his wife, and then he never acknowledged that she had helped and went on to later divorce her. He may have stolen his wife's idea, then ghosted her. This paper was immediately rejected by most historians and physicists. Galina Weinstein at the Center for Einstein Studies at Boston University is a staunch believer in Einstein's genius. She says that based on letters written by both Einstein and his first wife, they didn't work together on anything relating to physics. Instead, Maleva Marek was more like a confidant who Einstein talked to and bounced ideas off of. We don't know which story is true, but there appears to be something strange going on. Einstein was definitely a very brilliant physicist, but we have to wonder if he was a genius all on his own or had some help from his first wife. Number 5. Thomas Watson Thomas Watson was not quite as famous as the other people we talked about today, but he was one of the first great businessmen in the USA. He was born in 1874 in New York, had his first job selling pianos and sewing machines door to door, and worked his way up to the top. He eventually became the general manager of the Computing Tabulating Recording Company. This was a business that dealt with things like time clocks and punch cards. They also dealt with new technology that could weigh food and calculate the price. This was very cutting-edge stuff back in the early 1900s. In 1924, Thomas Watson had taken over the company. He renamed it International Business Machines, or IBM. He was like the original Steve Jobs, just without personally inventing the technology. Still, his company flourished. It easily survived the great stock market crash of 1929. It made profits during the Depression, and Watson agreed to make digital calculating machines in 1938, which would become desktop computers. But here comes the dark side. 
During World War II, Thomas Watson doubled IBM's employees to about 22,000 people. They worked extremely hard to provide war materials to the United States. IBM was the only company in the world that could make computation machines capable of aiding the military in complicated logistic decisions. But they were also supplying these same crucial computation machines to the enemy. Thomas Watson was directly responsible for supplying Nazi Germany with some of the technology they needed to wage war. While most companies immediately pulled out of Germany once the war started, IBM stuck around to make a huge profit. It was with Watson's technology that the Nazis transported millions of people to their deaths in concentration camps throughout Europe. Number 4. Aristotle Aristotle was allegedly a great thinker. He more or less was alive at the right time to record his thoughts on politics and metaphysics and for people to remember him. Aristotle was a curious man with some pretty bad ideas. He loved physics, chemistry, the study of the stars and even biology. One thing he hated was women. Aristotle made some really odd claims about women during his life. He said women have fewer teeth than men. He also said that when compared to men, women are immature, deformed, and even monstrous. He even believed men had hotter blood than women for some strange reason. Although Aristotle wasn't as awful as Plato, the great philosopher who believed all women should be communally shared. Aristotle's bad ideas kept going on and on. You have to remember that back when he was alive in the 4th century BC, the entire city of Athens was basically run by slaves. Aristotle once wrote that prisoners of war certainly don't believe in being enslaved just because they were on the losing side of the battle. But he also argued that some people were naturally born to be slaves. But it wasn't a race issue, it was a brain issue. Aristotle said that anyone who willingly submits and takes orders and anyone not smart enough to think for themselves should just be a slave and leave the thinking to more advanced men. He called these machine people no better than animals. Number 3. Oliver Cromwell In the United Kingdom, Oliver Cromwell is somewhat comparable to Abraham Lincoln in the US with fame and reverence. The BBC did a poll asking citizens who the greatest Britain of the second millennium was, and Oliver Cromwell came in third. And in the 150 biographies that have been published over the past 100 years, Cromwell is almost always shown in a favorable light. Oliver Cromwell, who died 350 years ago, was not a revolutionary hero. He was a war criminal guilty of religious persecution and ethnic cleansing. He conducted two massacres in Ireland. The slaughter at Drogheda and Wexford in 1649 was one of the greatest atrocities in history. Cromwell was an English general who led the armies of the Parliament of England in the English Civil War. He then ruled the British Isles as Lord Protector between 1653 and 1658. Basically, he was the unofficial king and lord of the British Isles. The one good thing he did was pull England out of a period of darkness and stabilize the government. Many consider him both a revolutionary and a bloodthirsty dictator. One of the biggest things about Cromwell was that he hated Irish Catholics. When he went to Ireland, he had a mission to wipe out as many of the Irish Catholics as he could. By the time he was finished with Ireland, after a great ethnic cleansing and tens of thousands slaughtered, the country was ruled by the Protestants. Number 2. Walt Disney Walt Disney was born in the year 1901 the second year of the 20th century. Over the next 65 years, he grew to be a business tycoon and a huge name in the film industry. But Disney wasn't as benevolent as his image would make him appear. In 1928, Walt Disney sketched a mouse, the very mouse that would become the face of Disney. Its name was Mortimer Mouse. Imagine how different things would have been if Disney had actually named the mouse Mortimer instead of Mickey. It wasn't until he showed the sketch to his wife that she could talk him out of it. His wife Lily said Mortimer was too pompous of a name and that Mickey was cuter. While Disney was a pioneering and prosperous man, he was also the subject of many controversies, some of which involved rumors that he was anti-Semitic and racist. These rumors were and remain hard to dismiss. In the 1930s, Disney went to meetings of a pro-Nazi organization 
the German-American Bund. He also invited a known Nazi propagandist and filmmaker, Leni Riefenstahl, and gave her a personal tour of Disney Studios. Disney was also accused of spreading black stereotypes in his films. Even though he had many critics, Disney also had numerous supporters who said he was not anti-Semitic or racist. The argument about Disney's suspected discrimination and racism continues to this day. Number 1. Che Guevara Che Guevara's face is everywhere these days, even though quite a few people don't even know his name. The iconic Argentine Marxist and revolutionary is a big deal to socialists and was definitely one of the most influential humans at the end of the 20th century. The picture you see of him on the t-shirts is considered one of the most famous photographs in the entire world. In 1954, he met Fidel Castro in Mexico and joined his rebellion in Cuba. Fidel won the rebellion and became the president of Cuba, and together with Che, declared Cuba a communist country. Then, in 1965, Che began more revolutions in places like Congo, Kinshasa, and Bolivia. But just two years later, in 1967, he was captured and killed by Bolivian soldiers. Most people make Che Guevara out to be a kind of anti-hero, a great revolutionary who helped liberate Cuba. But he was actually a very evil person. Perhaps the evilest thing about him was that he really enjoyed killing. He was once quoted as saying that murdering another person made his nostrils dilate and that he savored the smell of gunpowder and blood. He became angry when the Soviet Union refused to attack America and claimed if the Cubans had received those missiles, they definitely would have used them. He did some other pretty nasty stuff. He created the first ever correction work camp in Cuba, which was the Cuban version of a Soviet gulag. Under Guevara's reign, anyone who was anti-authority was taken and tortured. Many people were killed and mutilated, and an unknown number of people were executed on Shea's direct orders, often by his own hand, because he supposedly loved doing it. Who's your favorite historical figure who had a serious dark side? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like these, and I'll see you next time.